Hello, my name is Tamsin Spackman, and today I'm going to introduce you to the Self Edge Train, which is a new product I've been working on for teachingchildrenmusic.com. And I'm just going to give you a quick overview. First of all, I want to do a disclaimer that this is an e product, it, none of the physical product. Um, items actually come with a product that you have to print them out yourself. Also, the Soulfish Train is a play on words. Um, it's an air training program. So, um, so let's just do a quick run through over everything and then I'll tell you a little bit more about each product. First of all, um, here's where the trains come into play. There are these magnet notes and I just bought some tacky dots at the store and put them on the back of these notes and then you can move the notes around on the staff and the train tells you where everything is. There's some pre-reading stabs and there's color coded and then they're also all in black and white. And if magnets kind of, um, it's kind of dangerous to work with magnets for little kids. So you could also do it on felt and here I just hot glued the felt to the back. So there's that. I've updated the Rainbow Castle game to match these colors and there's the cards that go with that. There's a mini version of the beginning rhythm program here with some rhythm cards. There's some things to help you teach strong and weak beat. Um, this is really especially good for t teaching how to conduct. There's a PowerPoint presentation about Guido D'Arezzo, who was the inventor of Solfege, so that's kind of why he's included. There's supplemental music. This product focuses on So Mi La, um, and so these songs are all using So Mi La, and there's two songs for every month and a happy birthday song. There are solfege chains. There is some pre-reading music exercises with the so and the me. And there are these circles, which I have printed out on construction paper and laminated. And the kids will run around and play on these. There are some things to learn about the opposites of um, high, low, slow, fast, and um, loud and soft. And then these are some printouts to learn the line notes and space notes. There are some staircase manipulatives. There are 11 nursery rhymes that are in six different formats. And um, these ones here are color coded to match the thing in that they say do, do, so, so, la, la, so, or twinkle, twinkle, little star. And then there's also um, just a black and white version with the regular words. And then this is an insert that you put behind your piano. And so that's the quick run over. So let's just talk a little bit more about each one of these and how you would use them. Um, I'm going to take the felt aside because we can work with the magnets. So here with the magnets, we've got we've got a five line staff. We've got two line staff with colors and grand staff with um, fully color coded. And then there's these. So what you would do with the kids is you would you could do a song an exercise. And you could work with them in conjunction with the sulfage chains. There's actually a different video that shows better how to use these sulfage chains. But um, for this example, we have um, me, me, so, la. And so then the student could go me, me, so, la. And then they, they could notate the different exercises. So maybe that's a little bit about how those work. And... Then there's also some, what I like to call puzzles, the kids like call these puzzles, um, where, where you have a, you have, this one is, you know, that says law, and then there's, there's a question mark here, so they have to figure out which note goes there. So those are puzzles, and they have it for line notes, and then for me, also, also there's one for me on the space note. So... That's that. Oh, and there are also just plain black notes for you to work with. And let's see, Rainbow Castle is in, in the matching game. The kids, and you'll have come up with your own marker. They will draw a card, and it's essentially just like Candyland. So there's a red one. It's a C, and they would move to to Do. This is for um, for the key C major or for fixed Do. This product, this product program, there are there are things to adapt it for fixed dough and move a little. So whichever one you use, this product is is compatible for it. So that's how you play this, just like Candyland. And then this is a matching game where they would um, put the cards on the squares. So that's how that works. So these are the pre-reading exercises. Um, 
So, the, so in the Kodai method, one of the ways that you learn how to read music is with with one stat, one line, and then you go to two, and then you go to three, and you build your way up. So if that's something that interests you, there's some exercises here that go along with that methodology. For I've got rhythm, what we've got here um, is we've got some, a two measure staff, and this is the time signature. Then we've got one for four measures, and then this one is for rain, rain, go away, and it's like a puzzle, and they put the piece, put the pieces on for that, and it's just for rain, rain, go away. There's not any other nursery rhyme, so it's just get your feet wet kind of a thing, and then you can do it the same exercise here. And then there are quarter notes and eighth notes and rests that you can incorporate incorporate in. So that's that. And like I said, these are just we like to make musical paths and the kids walk on these and they sing them and they have a lot of fun with those. And the same thing goes for a staircase. These go on your stairs. And supplemental songs, there's two songs for every month, and so I'll just give an example. This month is October. Oh, that's the one I said over to the side. <laughs> so for October, there is Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue, searching for the Indies in 1492. Or, carve a pumpkin, light a flame, Halloween is here again. So they're just songs like that for every month to reinforce what you're learning. And the way these work, as for like for two, for two four measure, you would you introduce the concept of you start with a strong beat and then you have a weak beat, and then if you wanted to do four four, then you would do it like this, and then you can learn how to conduct, teach your students how to conduct, and and then um, you can do the same thing for three four time, and then introduce it for six eight. So anyway, that's how those work. And, you know, I'm just going to show you really fast how to conduct because the um, instructions in the video aren't as good. So for 2-4, you're going to go like this. Um, and for 3-4, it's 1-2-3. And the strongest beat is the down beat. So that's important. For 4-4, four, four, it's 1-2-3. Three, four, one, two, three, four, and then for six, eight, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, I did it wrong. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's how that. That's how those work. And so Guido Dorezzo, this one I kind of recommend you do as a PowerPoint presentation. You don't really need to print it out, but if you want to, here they are. And, and then there's just a little bit of information for each one of these pictures. Okay, the nursery rhymes. The six different formats are um, with a boredon, with a boredon, and a boredon is essentially a simple accompaniment with just one and five. So it goes da 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 or Sometimes they are, you know, just a just an open fifth. So um, they're in D major. Uh, if you're doing movable dough, this is better because it's better for children's voices. But they're also in C major, um, which is good for movable dough and fixed dough. They have them with the nursery rhymes, the boradon in the treble, treble clef, or brought down into the bass clef, which is nice for playing on the piano. And so there's there's um, just with the just um, there's black and white with the without color with um, <laughs> black and white with the with the words black and white with solfege words typed in, and then there's the same thing with color so that the kids can color coordinate them. And then you have this panel insert, um, and you just stick this behind the keys, which is really nice for um, it's really nice that it doesn't hurt your piano at all. You can take it, put it on, take it out. No sticky residue from stickers, and so that's kind of a nice way to color code the piano. And then these, there's just a couple of printouts, and then there's there's a few others too. But this is pretty much the the meat and potatoes of the learning your line notes and space notes because it's pretty simple. Okay, and then we have our opposites. Um, 
there's a list here of all of the different nursery rhymes that come with it, and so that you can use these to say, okay, we're going to do Humpty Dumpty, and we're going to do it fast or slow. Let's do it slow, loud or soft. We're going to do it loud, and we're going to sing it. We're going to sing it high, and so then they would sing high and fast, and or high and slow and loud, and they would do Humpty Dumpty. So you just kind of mix and match these and have some fun with that, and and learn your opposites. So there's that, and then there's this matching game where you know the kid pulls up the match. There's a woman and singing and a man singing, and the children are asked just to say, you know, which one is going to be higher, which one's going to be lower. Oh, the man would probably be lower, the woman would be higher, and they get a match. So that's that game. And this is for fast or slow. It looks kind of like a speedometer. There's a little arrow. So we're going to sing it slow. It was grave, largo. Adagio, Andante, Maracho, Allegro, Vivace, and Presto. It's just a fun little thing and you can move it around if you want the kids to go faster or slower. And then there's these exercises which you can say, is this going high or is this going low? And you can also print them out and make a matching game if you wanted to for your more advanced students. So that is the Solfage Train in a nutshell. And, um, I will end by saying that these are some really fun ideas, and what's to keep you from doing them yourself? Nothing. So if you see an idea here, you could obviously recreate it yourself and have a lot of fun with your kids. But I will say that it took me a lot of time to put these together, so I think that um, for the time it's a good product. So thank you for watching. Good job.